everybody and this is part three of the Tamiya 124 scale Corolla build. Uh, in this video we're going to be covering the construction of the internal uh, components for the kit. Uh, and I start off with the roll cage just because it's the one of the parts of a rally car kit that I really don't like uh, constructing just because of the amount of uh, paintwork that's involved with it, different colours and so on and masking. Um, this roll cage was constructed onto the floor pan at an earlier stage and sprayed gloss white uh, and now we're covering all the uh, various bits of uh, colour for the kit starting off with uh, red for the padding there's a pouch at the side of the roll cage as well that's been done earlier on this is all brush painted using uh, citadel uh, colours I find that the paint really well the with the, well, the brush paint really well uh, so I use those thinned down with uh, quite a bit of water to them uh, and I find that they go on perfectly well using that sort of method so it's just a case of really working around the parts and just carefully painting them in I've used a cocktail stick to remove any bits of uh, any errors going on to the black and this is uh, Tamiya lacquer paint which again like the Citadel paint paints really well with a brush uh, using uh, plenty of lacquer thinners to make sure that the paint goes on smoothly and it's virtually indistinguishable from masking and spraying if it's uh, painted carefully. An area like this um, panel at the back of the roll cage is just far too difficult to, to mask. It would take ages and to try and avoid any overspray would be very difficult. So I find it's just as easy to, uh, to brush paint those, those parts. Bearing in mind that a component like that uh, will be virtually invisible um, towards the back of the car. So this is obviously speeded up. I wish I could paint that quickly, but I can't. Anyway, just work around uh, the roll cage. Got to be a bit patient with this stage, but it's worth it when it's uh, when it's done. So there's the finished article. There is a bit of spray work on the matte black front portion of the roll cage. There, it's quite visible through the through the windscreen. So that's the completed uh, roll cage ready for installation later on in another part of uh, another video later on. Going on to the footwells now and these have been sprayed in gloss red. I can't recall, I think it's a Tamiya gloss red that I've used for, for that. And then the fire extinguishers masked off and the rest of the unit painted with uh, Tamiya lacquer semi-gloss black and now we're going to unmask the part just make sure that the masking is effective I think I got away with this one really the, uh, I took quite a while to mask the fire extinguishers off and uh, got a fairly good result straight off just carefully working around the part making sure that it doesn't get scratched these parts will uh, have some photo etch basically the like a matte that I'm going to paint in a slightly contrasting dark grey just to to show those up a little bit more through the cockpit So there we are, the maskings come off, pleased with the result for that and we can move on to some detailing. We're going to use some bare metal foil for the retaining straps. This is um, the bare metal foil chrome. Could do it in an aluminium shade, I just like a bit of uh, bling on the fire extinguisher bottles. So I'm using uh, a very bright chrome and it shows up through the dark cockpit as well. 
So just a very thin strip required from the uh, just from the edge. I always find that trying to judge the width of these sort of straps is very difficult. They're always narrower than you might first expect. So I tend to uh, make them a little bit thinner than they appear to the eye. Got this one right first time really. I do find bare metal files very fiddly to get off the backing sheet and to mess about with it for quite a while. I just burnish it down a little bit there because it does tend to burr up with the, even with a sharp knife blade so just a, just a quick rub to flatten it down again. A couple of uh, thin sections and just trying to get the foil off the backing paper. and just apply it very gently to one side of the extinguisher and it just grips enough to be able to burnish it down using some very fine tweezers to uh, make sure it's in place and then a cocktail stick just to press it in place there's obviously going to be a bit of excess at the end there just to trim that off with a sharp blade and a final burnish with uh, a wooden stick and, and a clean cotton bud that just really flattens the part down. Bare metal foil does com uh, conform very well to, to moulded detail. We went on after this stage just to paint the heads of the extinguishers in Tamiya's new uh, lacquer paint, it's called Sparkling Silver, it really does um, show, the, show the silver up in the, up in the darkness of, uh, of the car cockpit. See that later on on the finished, uh, finished item. There's a decal on one of the extinguishers. Uh, which will apply now. I did start trying to fit the decal between the two applied straps but found that that didn't work so I removed the rear strap so that you could we could just apply the decal and then the strap over the top of it. Much easier than trying to get it neat to finish to, than trying to get it to fit in uh, between the straps. So just straightforward with uh, some microset, microsol, just to settle the decal down. So there we are in place. Now we're going to move on next to the pedal set. Starting off by giving those a coat of uh, Tamiya lacquer titanium gold and then masking off using masking tape and a bit of mask on at the top there before painting it with Tamiya lacquer semi-gloss black. Then another round of masking for the clutch pedal on the left which is in, uh, in silver so there we are, all unmasked and ready to fit to the driver's side footwell. I'm using an acrylic, um, basically a PVA glue for assembling most of the interior components. Um, very few of them are structural so it doesn't need a massively strong bond and this glue does the job well enough. Uh, obviously leaves no fogging. I have found that using CA in the uh, cockpit of a car can fog weeks and maybe months after construction is complete. Don't know how that happens, but it's happened to me before, so I don't take any chances. Now I use PVA for the majority of the internal construction. Downside of using a PVA is that it sometimes takes 
a while it doesn't grab instantly you can see there that it's folded around a little bit but um, if you just give it a bit of heat I've got a bit of a, a heater in the workroom that I can just wave the part in front of and it's just enough to uh, skin the PVA over and set the part in place and obviously leave it to dry for a little bit longer than that so that's uh, that's the pedals done just make sure that it's nice and straight from both sides and that's the finished result quite pleased with that it's um, complete with the photo etch panel from the scale motorsport set just painted in uh, Tamiya German Grey it just makes a bit of a contrast with the black. Uh, nice effect. So there are the uh, footwells complete ready to go in the car at a later stage. I like to assemble all the internal components basically treating these as almost like a mini kit. If you spend time really concentrating on detailing each separate component it really does make a, an effect when everything comes together at the end. Okay so next up we've got the gear shift which again took quite a bit of masking and detail painting obviously sprayed gloss white in the initial stages of construction going back to when we did the body shell uh, so that's had a coat of white and some detail painting in semi-gloss black this is the rear part of the uh, roll cage frame, some of the structural parts of the car. Um, this is just some detail painting for the, I believe it's the jack actually, mounted on the back of the frame. And there's just a couple of uh, blue straps there that we're uh, filling in with a very fine brush. I've had these brushes for a long time, they really do get looked after. Um, they were very expensive, well relatively expensive, they were Windsor & Newton Sable, but uh, taken care of, they will last for an awful long time. I think they're worth the investment, they do make a difference when you brush painting. On now to, um, I'm, I'm assuming it's some sort of electrical box. Um, which is going to be covered in scale motorsport uh, Kevlar weave. Love using scale motorsport uh, carbon fibre decal. Quite easy, but does take a bit of practice. So I've actually used a template from uh, a set specifically designed for the Tamiya Corolla uh, and it's obviously got the templates marked out on the rear of the uh, Kevlar sheet so it's just a case of cutting those out and applying them so just get them in place it sometimes takes a while for the uh, carbon fibre decal to grab but once they're in place, this is obviously put on with a bit of micro set underneath. But again, using the heater uh, in the model room just drags the decal into place. It really does shrink it on. See there, it's gone on quite well. It just needs some tidying up at the edges. Just work steadily with it, gently with it. It's very, very thin and tears very easily. Um, but with some gentle persuasion, it does go into place. Just working around with a brush, frequent applications of microsol at this stage, just to really soften the decal and to uh, suck it down onto the molded detail. Just finishing off with the final brush round and we're just about there I think with this one 
this part has a photo etch uh, bracket which runs along the top and sides so we'll just put that together in uh, in a minute in a moment just here we are we'll just sorry about my head in the shot there so there we are cut out you can actually get special tweezers for bending photo etch but I'm, I don't think they're necessary this is just a pair of standard Tamiya uh, tweezers and the scale motorsport etch does bend very easily so I think it's stainless steel and this really does uh, help bring this part together it's a nice uh, nice addition to to the component it is pretty difficult to see once once it's fitted into the cockpit but it's uh, it's worth doing so there we are that's the finished part the uh, kevlar has gone on really well on that i'm very pleased with it so it looks good with the uh, photo etch as well We've got to use the same Kevlar decal for the internal element of the fuel tank. We had to have a couple of goes, that's a, um, a damaged decal that uh, didn't work at the top. So on this second attempt I made sure I cut, there's a hole for the uh, decal to go over the spare wheel bracket which is cut out there it just makes it easier to settle the decal down by having that hole pre-cut so again getting the decal roughly into place and starting to smooth the air bubbles out with uh, with a brush again the brush dipped in some micro set at this stage and just softens the decal enough to get it into position and starts to make it grab to the part so just working round it's quite a complex shape is this there's um, a couple of boxes at the side that the decal's got to go over but it's amazing what contours this scale motorsport carbon fiber decal will uh, will conform to so after probably it's a good 20 25 minutes work to get the decal to settle and just to rub down with the finger just to get rid of uh, a few air bubbles there nearly there with this one and then just to make sure that it's fully settled down I'll just give it a full brush over with some micro set that finally pulls the decal right down into uh, the conform to conform to the shape of the of the part and just a final buff down with uh, the cotton bud just to make sure that it's uh, fully uh, glued down onto the onto the component so there we are quite a nice smooth finish uh, again we've got some photo etch to go onto this part just a couple of uh, circular parts that go over the those protrusions there on them it's quite a fiddly process but I think it adds something to the to the component so a really good pair of fine tweezers comes into its own these did need drilling well filing out a little bit because the buildup of paint on the on the plastic part did just uh, prevent the uh, photo etch from fitting properly so just a bit of filing out to open the hole 
and in the went OK. The uh, glue pen that I'm using there, I know I said I didn't use um, CA, but this is a new CA that I've used for the first time. It's a gel pen, basically. It's got a very fine applicator. It's enough just to get a tiny little bit of uh, glue onto the component. Just on some brush painting now, and some aluminium coloured boxes at the side of the tank. I'm assuming there's some sort of pump mechanism or something similar. I don't know enough about the technicalities of the uh, car to understand exactly what they are. But I'm just following the Tamir instructions here that call out for aluminium. So I'm using, a, the again, the lacquer paint gloss aluminium in this case to, uh, to paint those components in. Nicely thinned down with Tamiya lacquer thinner, and it's the, I use the retarder type. It just gives uh, the paint a little bit more brush time, just to make sure that you can smooth out all the brush marks. But the lacquer paint really doesn't leave. If you apply the right amount, the lacquer paint doesn't really leave any brush marks. It's great to paint. It's probably the best. Uh, brush paint that I've, uh, that I've used. I won't go back to anything else now. Maybe the Citadel colours are pretty good, but this Tommy Lacquer paints uh, take some beating. The colour range is uh, a bit limited at the minute, but I'm sure that uh, if they sell well, that Tommy will bring some other colours out. So there's just one final element to go a couple of final elements there's um, the body color component there at the bottom of what looks like a filter or something at the side of the fuel tank so that's being painted in uh, lacquer gloss white you can see the coverage is really good going over black gloss black that uh, I actually did put a subsequent coat on this, but two coats for white over black is uh, pretty good. Again, this is very difficult to see this uh, part when, when installed inside the car, so I wasn't too fussy about that. And again, the Tamiya instructions call out for uh, some blue. I'm assuming that these are pipe connectors of some sort and I assume that super detailing would call out for some pipe work to be attached to those but uh, I'm not going to do that. So there's the finished uh, fuel tank, pretty pleased with that after all the detail painting. Uh, you can see the bracket for the spare wheel uh, mounted on top, on top there. We're going to be doing the spare wheel right at the end of the internal construction. This is um, probably some sort of telemetry box painted in Tamiya's lacquer silver. And that has some photo etch detailing as well. The last uh, component that we're going to be looking at in this particular video is the uh, dividing screen that separates the cockpit from the uh, boot area of the car uh, that contains the fuel tank and the spare wheel mounted on top. Tamiya in the kit supply some uh, pre-cut uh, masks for the window uh, element of the divider. The rest of it's painted black. Uh, it's pretty unusual and certainly the aircraft kits that Tamiya do where they provide um, the masking in the kits. They're not usually pre-cut but in this particular kit they are so it's quite easy just to peel them off and they're a really good fit so that was done and the unit sprayed uh, in the lacquer paint semi-gloss black and we're just unmasking the part at the minute the masks were burnished down in the previous shot that you saw there just to make sure that there was no paint bleed under the under the masks 
and uh, they came out really well. They were a really excellent fit for the part. So the masks come off pretty easily. Just a quick check to make sure they've not left any residue on the clear element. But they've come out. That's come out really well. Very pleased with that part. So that'll be ready to go in when we come to assemble the cockpit element. Just a quick shot of the spare wheel um, here. We've made obviously the wheels up and deckled them. There is a decal missing that uh, I'm waiting for a spare to arrive. Uh, it's just the Toyota uh, logo that's missing from that particular shot. That'll be easy enough to fit when uh, when the spare arrives. And I've just added uh, a strap there, a retaining strap, just out of lead foil and a spare etched buckle from the seat belt uh, set. Uh, we're not going to cover the seats and dashboard in this particular video. We'll come back to that when we come to assemble the interior, which will be probably video five in this series, five or six. So we'll come back to that uh, at a later date. So that's it for part three. In the fourth video, we'll be looking at building the chassis of the car. That'll include the assembly of the transmission and suspension elements that were prepared in, painted up in uh, video two of this series. So to pick that one up, if you just subscribe to the channel, you'll receive notification when that video is ready. It shouldn't be too long now. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching this one. We'll catch up next time. Bye-bye.